Spanish. I just noticed that really obese guy, like bringing up the rear. He was like really struggling. Yeah. To like get caught. do the dash part. He did the bash part pretty yeah. good, <laughs> but he was struggling with the dash part. He's he's the one who's going to be doing the time. So um, so pretty much uh, you know the media likes to show all these like kind of stories, but make it seem heartwarming. Oh, like this little boy is selling lemonade to help his like you know his little brother get insulin or like this kind of like crazy well, kind this of chemistry crazy. teacher who is suffering from cancer sells the best crystal meth yeah or like this i heard like a principal works at walmart at night for the past like several years so he can give like his students money because they're so poor i saw a story literally i saw a story like that recently so like so that i want to show my heart yeah yeah so i want to but they they make it seem like yeah this is this shows that people are great not to show that institutionally that but the system is system horrible is so broken that people gotta be this like heroic people have to be heroes like this so i want to show another thing another story i want i want to i want to get your opinion dr james on this because this story kind of they make it seem like it's a really happy story for me it's kind of crazy but i don't know let's proceed good morning america I think that's a, old, I think that's an oxymoron. Good morning, fast America. Food restaurant. Her colleagues and customers right there to celebrate with her. At this Pennsylvania McDonald's, Ruthie Schuster is serving up more than just food on the go. She's offering smiles, a happy meal of a different kind, even the occasional performance. Friday about 30 comes and we all sing. And we sing, you are my son, Chef. We all sing it every time they come in. Bringing joy is something Ruthie has done for nearly a century. And this soon to be 100 year old is easily the restaurant's most popular employee. I became a widow when I was 50. And I've been working ever, 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 ever since. And I like working. During the pandemic, Ruthie says she misses the crowds that she would greet at work and after work activities. I go dance for four days a week. You can't go dance in nowhere. There's no dances around. But she's still finding ways to connect with others, receiving a massive flood of birthday cards. To me, it's just a number. With so many coming in, the company has installed her own mailbox on site. Ruthie says the birthday wishes mean a lot and that she plans to keep working for reasons we all can relate to. I get a payday. <laughs> I get a pay to pay my bills. And that's good. I never had a lot of money, but I always have enough. I love that. <laughs> Speaking the truth. Never had a lot of that money. last line she slipped in. <laughs> she, I mean, she looks incredible. She does not look like she's 100. No. Ruthie, whatever you're doing, maybe it's the fries. We're with but, you. Uh, Happy yeah. birthday. With you. We need that, those tips for sure. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. So, All right. So okay, where do so I that's begin? What, that's what McDonald's is doing to people right now. <laughs> where do I begin? Okay. So there's... <laughs> It's a, it's a little bit of this. It's a little bit of that. Yeah, okay. it's like a bit of so, sweetness to it, you know. Like so, let let's start let's start with uh, the first part because I'll go in chronological order. Yeah. Um, this woman is working because she knows that if she wakes up without a purpose, that is when that is the beginning of the end of her life, and yeah. she enjoys living. She enjoys having something to do. She enjoys being around people. Um, so for exactly what she's doing and if you look at the footage of her working at that particular location it's mostly senior citizens there anyway so it's more of a social thing uh more than than uh some sort of uh, economic necessity from the way that she uh from the way that she expresses herself yeah but then when you start getting into the second part of it and then it's like okay how many of these newscasters who make seven figures a year to sit there and read off of a fucking teleprompter you know are you going to be working at mcdonald's because you're bored at 100 no uh no you're not doing that <laughs> you're not doing that right so um you know they're all you know happy but it almost 
I know this sounds this sounds really cynical, but but it almost feels like they're like you know yeah we love that you're out there ha ha because you're there so that we'll never have to be in that position. Like it's almost like them celebrating that they are not in on, in those circumstances. Oh look at this person we're doing better than. That's what it seems like to me. Now I could be completely wrong, but we should not be looking at a woman who is 38 years past retirement age working at McDonald's. But it also shows you, you know, like the options we give see a citizens of a certain economic class, you know, either, either you have tons of money, you can do whatever you want. If you have tons of money. If you don't have money, then find a job. And we don't know if she's a homeowner. We don't know if she's, if she's like, you know, uh, money to like you know for inheritance for her offspring we don't know yeah. we don't know if she's like super poor and she was forced we don't know if she was yeah. on social security and fixed income we don't know those yeah, things that goes, that goes back but, that, but just the optics of that it is not as you know it is not you know as a, a much of a celebratory situation as they want to make it out to be it also goes back to the stereotype of like like people work at these places are teenagers. That is far from a teenager. Right. Bro. In fact, I just saw <laughs> a table. I just saw a table because people are saying, like, "Oh, <laughs> minimum wage workers and blah blah blah." Right. Yeah. So when you look at it, almost sixty percent of minimum wage workers are um, are adult age, and a lot of them have children, and a and a fair bit of them are actually single mothers. So. You know, you can say, oh, you know, that's just for high school. But the thing is, if it was just high schoolers working there, then you would not have access to these goods and or services, period. Yeah. No. So I just want to show that. And then you tell people to get off welfare and get a job. Well, they get whatever the fuck they can get, right? Yeah, and that's what she did. She got a job. Whatever extra income that she needs, that she decided to, to do that, and she likes doing it. But at the same time, what does McDonald's do? They give her a mailbox. They could have gave right. her... A hundred grand a year, the the celebrate really celebrate you. A hundred years. Here's a hundred grand a year. That would be nice, you know. But, but you oh, know, here's some here's you know. And Madonna's you know. totally for that. They totally hundred grand to them is like, you know, they found in the, in the toilet somewhere behind it. Well, Ronald McDonald's toilet. No, they can't. They can't afford a fifteen dollar minimum wage. So, <laughs> you know, they had spies. You know. Yeah, they can afford the spies though. Yeah. So yeah. like. Say I want to show that story real quick, that crazy, interesting, bittersweet story. They, so how much are they paying that, that guy, that rapper that, that uh, has the deal with Nike? Uh, Travis Scott. Travis that's Scott. Woo! I think it was right. Like, it was how like, much was, money are they paying that one person to think, sell cheap-ass hoodies that no think, one gives a fuck about? I think, it was, I think it was in eight digits. Yeah. Yeah. But they can't pay the employees that actually drive their, pro their, their you know? Yeah. It's nasty. It's nasty business. Yeah, so it, it, it's the business is almost as nasty as that shit they call food. Yeah, the chicken nugget slime, the McRib that reappeared and disappeared. Um, so like a monster in the night. So um, so pretty much, uh, and also we have the you know evict apocalypse is happening. Um, it's, it's it's a crazy situation. Like because I mean I'm really before I was like kind of optimistic. Maybe something might happen. Maybe biting or. But, but the minimum wage thing and then the whole like not giving everyone maybe we will pass 1400 but not everyone's gonna get 1400 you know um so now the the number the list is get smaller and smaller it's just dealing with the most cheapskate criminal pieces of shit ever you know um, so if it apocalypse is coming because of this um and like you have what's happening in texas people opening things up like when to be things normal then when they evict people um and mind you it's been a year since the pandemic has passed so that means People are behind rent for almost a whole year, 11 months, 12 months. Um, there's some people out there. So I want to give this, like, Professor Richard Wolf. hopefully one day he come on our show. I want to mm -hmm. play this clip real quick. New York, State, about New York City in particular. There are 1.2 million families. So we're talking a minimum of 5 to 10 million people in those families who are now facing what are called rent arrears. What that means is they haven't paid their rent, some of them for a month or two, some of them for 10 months. Many of these families are with children. So now let's look a little deeper into these numbers. 12.5% of New Yorkers are collecting unemployment insurance, one in eight workers. 
And there's a big overlap between those who can't get a regular salary, who are having to live on unemployment, and therefore cannot cover their rent. You'll understand that even more when I tell you that in 2018, so that's a good two years before the pandemic hits, already then, 22% of New Yorkers, more than one in five, paid one more than five? half their income in rent. That's considered to be deep trouble. You can't live in our society if you're paying more than half of your income simply for your living. Most landlords won't even let you rent the apartment. But that was yeah, true like, for like almost like one in four New Yorkers your income. before. You would be a millionaire to live in like a $100 apartment. apartment. <laughs> like some bullshit ratio. Before the pandemic, one more statistic for you. Actually, two. Before the pandemic, families with children made up 70% of the population of shelters in New York State. That's right. Families with children are the typical shelter. And population. that's before the pandemic. Already before the pandemic, yeah. and the unemployment hit. Children upon whom you really cannot blame one millimeter. Rich people will blame happened. anybody. <laughs> then they blame the parents. The Always blame the parents. Of doing this to They'll blame the kids, too. Blame the kids. <laughs> like Ted Cruz. Statistics. Ted Cruz. In 2016, a survey showed that 85% of children living in shelters achieved proficiency scores in... As, didn't... I'm sorry. 85% of kids didn't get proficiency uh, in math and reading. That's the damage done to their educations from being shelter occupants, which so many of them are. New York State is one of the richest states Maslow's in the Maslow's hierarchy States, of needs. Which is one of the richest countries in the world. And we are treating yeah, New York State almost our people, a rich country. especially our children, in a way that illustrates that capitalism is at least as efficient in producing poverty and reproducing it as it is in producing wealth and reproducing thereby a level of inequality that calls the entire system into question. So that's just the situation in New York City. Like, you know, I, uh, I mean, I was homeless. I can, I can definitely attest that, you know, the homeless shelters and homeless transitional houses are full of families full of teenagers um full of mothers for kids um full of them like transition there's just there's transitional housing dedicated to like women and children in new york city you know over the country so it's like that was before the pandemic and now we have this crisis and when people can't learn properly people can't get money properly it's like multi layers to it it's not just about the income it's also about um you know people people who are like a students even though they were in the shelter Kids were A students. I heard the story. I mean, I heard this a story like this. A kid was an A student who lived in the shelter, but once the lockdown started and remote learning, they started flunking like crazy. And, and like the parent was crying because they saw this kid as like a beacon to get out the situation. So this is happening everywhere. I just want to show this a context, like the human toll. Like we talk about stats, we talk about statistics, you know, in the in the dollar signs, but the human toll of what's happening when it comes to like not giving people the money they need or, or giving people the moratorium not to get kicked out of their houses and stuff. So this is yeah. a dash and bash, the status dash and bash ever. But that's why the rest of the show is going to be really fun because we have to counter that. That was really sad. <laughs> but um, yeah, I remember when I was a kid, um, I did, you know, you know, living in shelters. Um, you know, one of the things that really stuck out to me about this particular story, because, you know, you, again, you got to look at the people uh, behind the numbers. Yep. And I remember, you know, living in shelters as a, as a kid. This is way before I met you when I was yeah. like, you know, third, fourth grade. That's a long time ago. <laughs> um, That's like, you know, it's, it's easy to say, well, if, if, if a kid lives in a shelter, he's going to struggle. But what does that struggle actually look like, though? You know, what does that struggle actually look like? It's a kid that goes to school and he's distracted. Um, check, check, Mark. Yep. Uh, you Definitely know, the, the other kids, 
The other kids in school are making fun of them because they're homeless. Check mark. Remember that. Yeah. Um, you know, you you don't really have, you don't feel secure in your living situation. So there's an intense fear, uh, no matter what you do or where you go. Um, you know, where your next meal, where is that coming from? Not quite sure. Um, you don't know if you're really safe because sometimes, you know, the other people in the shelters, they can be uh, pretty uh, violently aggressive because they're under, you know, a crazy amount of stress. Yeah, I had weird stuff taken away. I had my underwear taken away from me. Remember when, yeah. remember when Sean John was cool? I had yeah. these Sean John undies and someone stole my underwear. Like all the things, you can, the nastiest thing you can steal, like you can keep it. I don't want it. So, I mean, this is all crazy situations. Um, they, and But yeah, but they blame somehow, they don't understand supportive institutions that are needed for, they say it takes a village to raise a child. So. Why do you blame the child? No, they don't say that anymore. They don't say that anymore. They don't say that anymore. They're like, you're on your own. That's what they say now. <laughs> it's a goddamn if, shame. If Ted Cruz is not your dad taking you to Cancun, you're on your own, buddy. Yeah. So. Or if he's not your surrogate dad because he's really a lizard man oh, shit. in uh, human skin. He's like he's like a shaved down Sasquatch. Um, so, so that's Black Power Magic Hour. Um, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Dash and Bash, we keep you up to date what's going on with everything around the world and around the country and in our city, born and raised in New York City. Dr. Virginius, follow him on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And that's Dash and Bash.